Hi guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Um, so this is now episode three of the step up. So I've taken you through a push and arm day, taken you through a leg day. So today is a back and delt session. So it's Wednesday. The reason that I have a back and delt session is because they're two of my weaker body parts. So obviously my programming is based on bringing up weaknesses and, and trying to bring more balance and more symmetry to my physique, which is a massive part of bodybuilding. Obviously I need more muscle everywhere, um, but if I do that, if I just focus on building more muscle everywhere, then those weaknesses are gonna stay as weaknesses. So yeah, today is back and delts. Um, obviously I'll take you through everything. I'm not with Reese yet. He'll be here later on. He does a different session, so you'll catch up with him later on. Um, but yeah, I'll probably make this a little bit more educational as well. Sort of chat to you a little bit more about why I'm doing what I'm doing, obviously just because it is just a session on my own. Um, but yeah, I'll take you through it all and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Found, found some of uh, Big Bridges cuffs. If you were watching on episode one. Josh Bridgman, if you're watching this video. Our send, cuffs got stolen. Our cuffs got stolen. He, didn't, he didn't send us them. I just found some in that basket. Me and Reese still need to buy some. So basically, like I say, the session is back and delt. First exercise is a lateral raise variation. So focusing on the side delt. Uh, I've not actually done this variation before, but I did get sent it by one of my clients, Miles, and it was from, uh, it was on Hunter Labrada's Instagram. So I'm gonna try it out. If I turn like that and go like this, if I go like that, it won't work. I'm trying to work out how I need to do it. I've got a video of it. <laughs> so this is what I'm trying to do. And he put an example of how to get in and out of it. I don't even know how he's done that. I'm gonna have to watch that again. There we go. It's complex. Try to make sure I don't get twisted up by it. To be fair, it feels pretty good. What I'm trying to get out of, not necessarily, it doesn't have to be sort of just because it's at the start of the session, I'm trying to load it a little bit more in the shortened range, but to be fair, like I could do a dumbbell lateral, that would be more so sort of focused on that shortened position. I've got loads of laterals in this session just because they're a small muscle group, the side delt's not a big muscle group, you know, you're gonna be able to recover from a good amount of volume. Um, and again, you know, they're a weakness for me, they're a weakness for quite a lot of people. You can never really have big enough side delts. Yeah, if you've got, you know, cap delts, it's gonna create a, a, a better illusion of your physique, you're gonna look wider up top, you're gonna make your, your waist look narrower. Same with back, you know, this session is to try and create those ratios. So I've got four sets on this. Um, to be fair, it is very, very good in terms of getting a good connection. If you struggle with connecting with your side delts, which I sometimes do, um, I've, I've, for months I just did a single arm cable lateral because that was like the, all I could connect with. But this feels really good. Um, so yeah, I've got four sets here. So what I'll usually do is I'll do like a really high rep set, like a 15 to 20 as uh, the goal of basically blood flow and getting sort of the the muscle prepared for the heavier loads basically and help again with getting a good connection. Then I'll do two heavier sets and then I'll finish off with another high rep set. So we've got two more still. So the reason that I'm using the bench is not only to sort of make it a little bit more stable. So I'm in a more stable environment. I'm not sort of swinging about with dumbbells and using sort of auxiliary muscle groups to help, but it's also to sort of place me in a slightly more 
efficient position to, to target the side delts. So the fact that I'm slightly angled forward like this puts me in a position where I'm then working in what's called sort of the, uh, the, the scapular plane. So I'm working through here rather than sort of through here. So what you'll see a lot of people do on a lateral raise is they'll come directly out to their side and straight away your traps are just going to kick in. Obviously it's not a massive problem because if you can still move a decent amount of weight and connect well with your side delts and your traps, it's almost like you're just hitting both at the same time. But if you're trying to isolate your side delts and really like grab onto those side delts, doing something like this or doing either maybe even like a single arm, if, you, if you're going to do like a single arm lateral, lean over slightly or if you're going to do a dual arm lateral you either lean into this position or you can even take like a staggered stance so you've got that sort of that base to then work from so again you're working here rather than working there so this is an exercise that requires vibrams. Doesn't necessarily, but I bring my vibrams for this. I find that any, any pressing, I find myself, especially overhead pressing, I find that I'm so used, I used to wear the vibrams quite a lot. I find myself so used to like gripping the floor that if I don't have them on, I'm, my feet slide all over. So yeah, I've got sweaty feet, look. I feel like they're not really they're not really an in thing anymore. I don't, they were never in, not as if they were ever fashionable. But I feel like, to be fair, I don't really wear them. I don't wear them on legs, because I just go barefoot, well, barefoot or just in socks. Same with pull. But it's more so for pressing, when I know I'm pressing myself against the floor, these help so much, like I can grip so much more. So same concept in terms of warm-ups. As always, like I said in the other video, work the weight up, bring the reps down. So for example, you might do five warm-ups. First with a light weight for 10 reps, second a bit heavier for six reps, third a bit heavier again for three reps, fourth a bit heavier again for two reps or a single, final rep for a single, and then you prepare to go for that heavy set. jumping I'll be honest it's not the heaviest stack in the world I'm not I'm not insanely strong I did have, um, so there's a guy called Adam Powell. People will know Adam Powell. So he messaged me and he was like, I'm not posting my nautilus shoulder press ever again. So I think he did like the stack for 10. And I think I did it for like 25 and I got the, I did, my top set was like 60 on the stack. But I did tell him, I was like, this must be lighter. Like not every, even though it looks like the same exact machine, I'm pretty sure this is either an older version or a newer version because our strength levels aren't that different. So. That's, I guess, a bit of valuable value to take from that is don't really worry about what other people are doing. Like, this isn't that strong. It looks, oh, such, fucking hell, he's putting 60 kilos on the stack. But it's not actually that strong because it's quite a, a light stack. Each machine is, is different. Even if it is the same brand, one version is newer or older, so there's more friction or one might be more well maintain, maintained. Loads of things go into it. It's not always as easy and, and as black and white as, you know, I should be as strong as this person or that person on that same machine. I 
through that. Two up. I've lost a headphone. So I've just got Phil Collins in the air tonight, just in one hit, one ear. It's not quite the same. A lot of my training, and it's not always just a post on social media. Like, obviously that's a benefit, but after most sets, I'll watch my own set back to see how it was, see what I could improve. Like I watch my clients' videos when they send over their, their training feedback. The main thing that I need to keep working on, and I, it's a lot better than it used to be, is keeping my hips back. So as soon as I press that first rep, my hips slide forward a tiny, tiny bit, which I don't mind massively because it's putting me into a safe position to press. But I, I reckon I could probably do 100 kilos on the stack if I was pressing from here. So I'm pressing here. As soon as I press, I slip to about there. So it's a little bit annoying, but it's better than it, it has been before. Okay. Whew. Okay. That was good, so that's 25. They, uh, the best I had on that is 24. I wanted 25 on that for a while. I wanted 20 on it for ages. Then I got 20, so I wanted 25. Uh, it's a little bit rushed. I know the eccentrics, they're not great, but I just quite like a really high rep shoulder press. Like I feel I get a lot out of that. I do a, a high rep shoulder press on a Friday as well. So I press three times, like vertically press three times a week. So at the minute I've got a high incline dumbbell I've got that, and then I've got the Cybex shoulder press with a neutral grip. But yeah, I feel like I get a lot out of a high rep set. Um, you know, very rarely previously have I felt like my front delts like connect really well and almost feel like they're on fire after the set. Whereas with that, and with the same with the, uh, the Cybex, on the high rep set, I feel like I get a lot out of it. So like I said, more laterals. Um, I do three sets here, all single arm. So it's a little bit time consuming, but I can align my arm and my body exactly how I want doing it single arm. When I do it dual arm, it, like I said earlier, it tends to sort of become where I'm in more, more sort of this sort of frontal plane. And I want to be more so in this kind of plane where I'm working through the scapula in a more natural range of motion for the side delt. Also, um, when you set up on, well, to be fair on anything, but especially on something like this, so this circle here, this is the axis of rotation. So this is basically where the machine rotates around. Obviously the joint in question on this movement is the shoulder. So we need the axis of rotation of the machine and the axis of rotation of our body. So the joint in question, we need those to align. sets on this I do a loading set and then two slightly higher reps so it's like an 8 to 10 then like a 12 to 15 and then a 15 to 20 where I'll do some partials as well at the end um, in terms of rest periods on unilateral work so when you're doing one limb at a time I'll usually try and give myself at least 30 seconds to a minute so it's nowhere near as much as it would be on like a, a dual arm movement if I was doing this together because obviously you're not peripherally fatigued. So peripherally, if you think limb to limb, this left side is fine, even though I've done the right. But centrally, I'm still quite fatigued, slightly out of breath. Uh, my heart's been pumping blood towards my right delt. So in order to sort of get that back to then provide it to the left side, just give yourself enough time. See clients all the time, right side, straight into the left side. Give yourself a little bit of time, get a few deep breaths in and then go into the second side. Just saying, Reese is uh, an hour and a half late so far. Last week it was two hours, so if he turns up soon, he's beaten last week.
this will have more warm-up sets than the last couple of exercises on shoulders, very much like I did a few warm-ups on the lateral at the start. So I'll do like three or four warm-ups on this, get the lats nice and warm, get a lot of blood in there, and then I've got two working sets. You got a photo? Is that we embrace? Got a photo? Is that we embrace? Fucking <laughs> getting wide, mate, you. You can be. Damn. Right, I'll put this on. You're going to tell everyone why you're late? I don't want it. Woke up late. Hello, everybody. How's everyone doing? Um, I'm a bit late. Uh, this session is actually quite nice for me because it's not too physically demanding. And therefore, and me and Finn don't actually train together, so I don't have to rush to get all my meals in beforehand. So I usually turn up about an hour late. So. Yeah, we usually finish, like, I finish about 20 minutes or 30 minutes after Finn. So I'm not too sure what Finn's done. What have you done so far? Is it? I'm on to start a back now. Okay, fair enough. So basically, this session, you. Yeah, you will this session for me is a little bit different in comparison to what we usually do. So this used to be like a, a bit of like a weak point accessory sort of today. And, uh, and nowadays, no compromise. No compromise. No compromise. Guys. Remember, no compromise. Yeah. Yeah. You're taking over my video again. No, I'm just saying my video. Like my, not my video. I'm doing my. My video. You, <laughs> I'm just saying my we're video. We're going to do this video on my channel, and we'll do the differences. That's what we'll do. We'll do the differences. Um, but that's pretty much that for me. I start off with a lateral raise, um, and then I literally just do two presses, and then that's pretty much how it is. Two presses, two pulls, and then a bit of arms. So pretty simple to be fair. Your video, mate. See you later. That's me done. See you later. You've already spoke more than I have. Hmm? You've already spoke more than I have. <laughs> What's that? Paracetamol. What? Cold nothing, and flu tablet. Nothing. For people who don't know what it is, it's it's Rydon. It's uh, it's a supplement. It's Rydon, that innit? Hmm? It's Rydon. Yes. Not gear. Not it's gear. not gear, guys. Not gear, unfortunately. Not not Oh my Android. god. Sanaya, Sanaya Fitness Posey. It's Sanaya from Sanaya Fitness Posey. It looks good. So I'm also thinking elbow down rather than elbow back and I'm keeping my spine neutral. You go into more of an extended position. So if I was to be here, arching my back and coming down like down and back like this, generally if you follow that elbow path, it's going to end up being a little bit more of a mid back row um, or it's going to end up being a little bit more thoracic lat dominant in terms of coming down and across like so. When I'm trying to keep it more so as a, a direct sort of straight down elbow path towards the hip, keeping the spine neutral. Like I say, you almost want to visualize the way I tell clients to try and visualize it is, imagine someone's got some string attached to the bottom of your upper arm and they're just pulling that string down and into the side of the body. So if, you, if I was to be doing it here, there's someone like down here just pulling that string just so you can try and completely forget your hand. That's why the straps are so useful. You can take out that grip strength, you can forget about your hand, and just visualize being dragged down through here. Dumbbell lateral raise, not a massive fan if I'm honest, but there's only literally a machine lateral raise here. That was decent, and it was a standing, a single arm Watson lateral raise. You missed which... my lateral raise today. Hmm? You missed my lateral raise today. Oh, yeah. So on the, uh, on the pull down as well, what you want to do is with your working foot, so if you're doing the left side, your working foot would be your left foot. You want that leg planted forwards. So almost try and imagine like you're locking this hip into position. So what that's going to do is prevent you from rotating the torso. We don't want any torso rotation or any lateral flexion on this movement because we're just trying to isolate the lat. So we want to have that leg planted, keep everything fixed, and then you're just dragging down from there. If you have this foot back, already I'm off balance there, and you're increasing that 
chance of twisting your torso. Swipe me now. Yeah, hold it, hold it. We have the, uh, the hammer shrimp shoulder press. Uh, as I said, I'm only doing two presses in the session, just three sets. So two in a vertical plane, aka shoulder press. And then we have one with the Nautilus flat press, where basically we're just banding that to create a greater challenge in the short. Um, not really too much thought process here, other than literally I need a bit more front delt. So therefore we're starting the session off with a more vertically inclined press. Uh, so yeah, two sets, one heavy set, one back off set, pretty simple. Best warm up set I've ever seen. Hmm? Best warm up set I've ever seen in my life. Right, fucked. My leg, how are your legs feeling? My legs, horrendous. I'm ruined. I told you I'd have I'm bombs ruined. to eat. <laughs> I have. <laughs> so, this is arguably the best piece of equipment Watson have ever made. So, obviously, it's like a dual pulley system. Apparently, it's called Animal Dual Stack Low Pulley. So, all of these, obviously, adjustments. Um, just make it suitable to the individual. So like, for example, when I was doing this, uh, Sanaya does this later on in the session. So we had to like manipulate it for each of us, but the seat's adjustable, the foot pads are adjustable, even the angle of the foot pad is adjustable. So yeah, it's, it's actually really, really good. Surprising for, for Watson. I hope no one from Watson's watching, but the majority of their kit is pretty poor. So in terms of what I'm trying to achieve on the seated row, obviously I just spoke about the pull down where I'm trying to keep the scapula fixed in position. With the seated row, it's the opposite. I'm trying to get scapular movement. So I want scapular protraction and then I want scapular retraction because that sort of is part of what I'm aiming for in terms of the musculature in the upper back. So I'm trying to target areas like the rhomboids, like the, the mid traps. So that retraction is gonna help with that. Likewise, when I protract, it's gonna lengthen that area, which is what we're trying to do, lengthen and shorten muscle. So I'm trying to protract, then I'm retracting, and then I'm driving the elbows back at about a 45 degree angle to the torso. I'm not trying to be too high, I'm also not trying to tuck in too low. I'm trying to sort of align with the area that I'm trying to train. So rhomboids, rear delts, traps, mid traps, um, those kind of areas. Um, the cables are set up pretty much directly with my shoulder as well, or just very slightly below that. Again, in terms of where I'm trying to align that elbow, the cable's pretty much set up in that perfect line. Oh, okay. Come on then, let's go. Come on, what? easy. Yeah, let's go, strong. Come on, oh, okay. easy mate. Yeah, good. Ooh. Come on then, let's go. Yeah, strong. Ooh. Moving well. Press. Yeah, again. Ooh. Come on. Powerful. Let's go. Yep. Good. Again. Ooh. Come on. There's one there. Easy. Easy. Yep. Yeah, nice. Ooh. Happy now? Are you, are you happy? Yeah, it was alright, it was a wrap up. Exactly. You would, you'd have bottled it if I wasn't here. You wasn't a bottle. Good job your coach comes and trains you. Your coach, yeah, yeah. It's my intra workout drink, guys. This is um, official CMP EAAs, Fin 15 for 15% off. I'm using the Pink Pig EAAs today. To be fair, all the EAAs are actually really nice. I'm not taking the piss anymore. All the EAAs are very good. Um, See, so yeah, I have EAAs, 10 grams for 3 grams of blue seam. I have 75 grams of highly branched psychic dextrin for 75 carb. I have two grams of taurine, five grams of electrolytes, and then I have a little bit of um, low salt as well for a little bit more potassium. I think that's everything I put in. Oh, creatine, can't forget my creatine. I have five grams of creatine, but sometimes it goes a bit over. Sometimes I have like eight or nine and I don't really care. Wild. <laughs> Oh. 
I'm at that point, I don't like admitting it, but I'm at that point in a gaining phase where I feel like I just need to sit down after every set. I'm not even heavy really, am I? I'm not really that fat, but I do just feel like it's nice to have a bit of a sit down after every set. So that's just to make it a little bit easier when I'm strapping up. And then this is to prevent me from ripping my hoodie. So I'm sure people have gone through plenty of t-shirts or hoodies from using a belt, so this helps. So that's just the 10 added for eight. So what, 100 and, like 111 kilos. That's including me, obviously. I have been doing, or not long ago, I was doing 20 on that, but it just got too sloppy. I was getting like four reppers. But I do think there is warrant to having in some sort of calisthenic work if you like so pull-ups dips bodyweight exercises I think it's good to have it in especially throughout a gaining phase because if you can even just maintain numbers as you get heavier you are still progressing that movement so yeah that's why I quite like the pull-up and also doesn't cause any issues with my back when sometimes when I do a like an upper back or mid back pull down or Terra's major kind of style pull down I tend to feel like my again my left side my back sort of plays up a little bit it's like I say, it's not the most demanding session. It's actually quite like it's obviously it's an enjoyable in a different way. Uh, I enjoy my other sessions because they're brutal. But I enjoy this session because it's like I leave and I don't feel like I've been hit by a bus, which is quite nice. So what I'll do as well on any unilateral work, do the weak side first and then just match it on the stronger side. So if you've got an imbalance, obviously if you're only taking one side to true failure, it's likely that that imbalance is going to even out over time. So if you've got, whether it be weak in terms of strength or even essentially weak in terms of visually, that sort of road to go down there is a little bit different because there's more things involved. But if it's a weakness in terms of strength and that also shows in your physique, then do the weak side first, do more unilateral work and then just match it on the stronger side, even if that means you're leaving a few reps in the tank. So basically the concept here is fail with a standing lateral, then lay down fail lying, stand up, drop the weight, fail standing, fail lying, drop the weight, and so on. It's a, it's a load drop set, but it's also a mechanical drop set in the fact that basically when I'm standing, I'm having to actually still work against the weight of my arm against gravity, whereas when I'm lying down, this is a lot easier than this because of the fact that obviously I'm laying down so there's less gravity, or gravity's the same, but obviously I'm not working against the weight of my arm. I'm more so just working against the cable, whereas when I'm standing, I'm working against my arm and the cable.
Yeah, buddy. I actually managed to do a, a, a curl without being like my tendon was about to snap in half. So a big win. I mean, again, Watson, some bits are okay, but the vast majority is just awful, awful equipment. If you're watching this, Watson creators, I'm not a fan, I'm not a fan. I lied, I wasn't done, I forgot. I need to do abs, because I didn't do them yesterday, which is very rare, but the session was dragging on yesterday because Reese took about an hour to do his dumbbell RDLs. Yeah, it took three attempts. It wasn't really my fault though. Like Finn generally does take the piss of his warms as well. Like for his hack squat, he walks away for like 15 minutes and I'm like, what, is that really needed? That must be a little bit excessive. <laughs> it's not easy if you're doing two plates like Reese. Two! Right guys, so that is the back and delt session all wrapped up. Um, again, thank you to Sanaya for running through some posing. I might actually do a fully sort of separate video just going through what we went through there. Because I get people ask, especially clients, like they want to you know, know where, where can I learn how to pose. So things like that are, are really valuable. So yeah, I'll probably put that up as, a, as another video at some point. Um, but yeah, so that's the session. Um, if anybody's got any questions, please just ask in the comments below. Please like the video, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.